Afternoon guys. On today's video, I just wanted to discuss about battery degradation and how you can actually limit uh, the SOC, which is referred to as a state of charge. Now, um, I'm not going to claim credit for this. Um, I actually went to a site that I get a lot of my information from and did before I took delivery of Beverly, which is uh, Push EVs. I'll put the link in the description below regarding this uh, article that they published. Now, they can't really claim uh, fame for it either because it's kind of um, common knowledge regarding lithium ion batteries. So effectively like laptops, uh, mobile devices, tablets and stuff like that. Um, you should try to keep your battery charge um, from dropping say below 20% and then when you recharge, don't charge any higher than say between 80 and 90%. So there maybe is a, a sweet spot around 82 to 85%. Um, and they've confirmed it now uh, with these figures um, that you should actually try to do the same um, with our BEVs. Now, um, for those of you that haven't watched my earlier videos, um, last year when I was driving the old Rattler, um, I'd done a range test of about four miles and my average across four months odd was um, about 105 miles average a day. In fact, today, I've actually done 110 miles. I've done five miles more. Uh, yesterday, I've done about 97. But it hovers around the 100 mile mark. And the reason I was waiting for uh, the 28 in this leaf rather than the uh, 2017 model with a uh, 30 kilowatt hour battery was potentially because I wanted to take in consideration the long life that I'm going to be running Beverly for. Um, I don't normally keep my vehicles, as I've said before, um, over three years as soon as I uh, go outside the warranty. Um, but for the purposes of uh, this channel, um, we need to get the data on these vehicles. So I will be keeping the vehicle um, upwards of maybe even six or seven years, depending on uh, financial uh, viability. If it starts starts costing uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds and it isn't worth uh, repairing the vehicle, then I'll have to sadly get rid of it. But I'll try to keep it going as long as I can within the realms of uh, what I'm trying to do here. But anyway, getting back to the uh, miles, when I looked at the range of say 150 miles odd of this vehicle, I wanted to take in consideration winter use. Um, and I know that I can get about 135, maybe 140 miles with uh, uh, use of the heat pump, keeping it about 17 degrees. And also I wanted to take in take in consideration the battery degradation over a set uh, period of years so for example the first three years well I should be pretty much under warranty regarding the battery it's not going to be uh, such an issue but once I start going into the really ultra high mileages of say 200,000 miles plus um, the state of charge is going to be really relevant now I took in took into the consideration with what I'd seen on the previous shape um, leafs that they lose about 11% once they reach upwards of 150, 160,000 miles. I know that all vehicles are not different, I appreciate that, but I'm just going on our climate here in the UK. So I took into consideration maybe even a 15% deficit in terms of range off my 150 miles would bring me way down to say 135, which is still 35 more or 30 miles more than what I would have done on a day-to-day -day basis um, in the uh, winter month, uh, in the uh, summer months. And in the winter months, it'd be probably pushing me down to say um, maybe 110, 115, which is still 10, um, uh, 10 miles more than what I'd need anyway. And I've always got the option of charging at home when I come back to Bessie for maybe a half hour to an hour, so I could have recouped that charge if I need to in the colder months. But I'd say for nine months of the year here in the UK, um, with these figures, um, I'm now going to um, start doing it and I'm going to do it from tonight. So this is going to be a test, an ongoing test um, that I'll uh, do every night now. I'm going to gauge um, exactly how much battery I've got left when I get home every afternoon and I'll leave it um, on charge on the timer depending on how much uh, charge I actually need to go up to say 90% or a little bit below. Now, going by say it takes 7 hours to charge this vehicle, give or take, on a 6 kilowatt hour supply. Um, I just basically done the math of um, 100 divided by 7 hours gives you 14.2 roughly percent 
um, per hour. And I know, I appreciate there's a tail off towards the end of the cycle of the charge when you probably get to like 97% and it will take an hour to get that 3%. Um, but this is why I'm going to do this test. Um, so today I'm down into the low 20s. Um, I've used the heating quite a lot today. Um, you can see it's raining and, and it demissed the vehicle as well. Um, so I've got down to, a, like I say, it's about 22, 23%. And so what I'm going to do is I've actually set my secondary timer up. So effectively, I'm going to charge up for uh, four hours and 30 minutes. And which should give me, off the top of my head, uh, 14 times 4 is 50, say 56, uh, plus another, say 40 minutes, so say another 8%. So I'm going to get about 64%. So that's 64 plus 23 is... Uh, 87 so it's going to be about 90 around between it's going to be the late 80s in a state of charge that i'll have when i drive the vehicle off tomorrow morning um, and as i say i will update these videos as we go through so i can actually get a good indication of actually um how accurate um the six kilowatt is in terms of charging sadly on the 28 in nissan leaf uh, we haven't got the ability to actually have a shut off point um so you could charge to a certain percentage which would take uh, care of this um, if you know how to do that because I can't see anything in the manual or in these um, in the in the sub menus just let me know in the comments below because that would be a good software update for this vehicle so effectively you could say set it say from say like whatever you've gone down to to a maximum state of charge so you could go to say 90% and it will shut the charging off uh, that'd be a really really good plus point if uh, Nissan uh, someone's watching this from Nissan and they can incorporate in uh, an over the air update um, so that's the plan um, but I say have a look at those figures guys because it's quite interesting uh, the amount of cycles that you're going to get if you keep it say within um, say uh, what I'm going to plan on doing which I think is a sweet spot uh, for me so then I'm not going to have range anxiety uh, is say between say 90% uh, and say 20% or 10% uh, because say cycling from a hundred if I remember a hundred down to 20% gives you about a thousand cycles these are just approximations so they're not going to be set in stone um, and then obviously uh, from 90% down to 20% you'll get effectively uh, 2,000 cycles so you'll double up your cycles um, sadly in the job that we do it might actually go down to 10 percent left on the battery but even going from say 90 to 10 percent you'll get about uh, 1500 cycles which is another 500 cycles than what i was getting uh where i was doing at the moment which was say going down i was like going down to say 28 percent or 30 percent and as, as i finished my shift and then charging back up to 100 percent every day um so it's just a test and see what happens. Um, sadly, I can't actually monitor the actual state of charge accurately because I haven't got lease by yet. Um, as I mentioned before, I will be taking delivery of it in the next uh, few weeks. Um, and it'd be interesting to see if this actually does work out like with the mobile phones and the uh, tablets. Um, anyway, guys, I hope you're having a good afternoon and I will speak to you guys soon. Bye for now.